cool. That's yeah. fine. Okay. All right, everybody. We are live. Dinis the Mirror search for Uhuru. And I have the brothers Ego and Raphael on with us uh, this afternoon. You guys are in the UK, correct? In London. Correct. Correct. I need to um, I need to get up there. I need to I need to get to London. I need I need to get to London. You know, I have this um I only travel to Africa um uh, mentality, but I, I I definitely have to get to London and I definitely have to get to uh Paris uh here here shortly but uh now are you, are you both are originally from uh the niger delta correct nigeria uh i i am i'm from a place called delta state it's, delta state. Uh, it's in niger delta it's where if, if you know anything about it it's about where the um the main oil um location in the country is uh -huh. where they drill, drill the oil right um from a culture or tribe as you call it called robo um but yeah i'm from that region i i need to cut you off now the you saw the pan african is pan african a wet dream uh video right did you see that yes okay yeah the brother of mecca do you guys know him no 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 but from his name he's uh he's Igbo. That, that's okay. much he swears he, he swears he's not Igbo. oh really yeah where, where do you say he's from then he's from what you just said the uh how do you pronounce it? yeah oh, well <sighs> There are some, okay, look at this way, there are some Igbos who live in that area and were born in that area as well. Over time, they've lived in there, but but that name is unmistakably Igbo. Yeah, it's okay. unmistakable. I have, I have a friend who's also from the same state, Delta State, who is Igbo. Okay. You know, you know this is all part of the whole sectioning off and creation of states and, and, and borders that sometimes you get people from a different kind of nation or culture within your own culture so it happens but hey everyone's welcome anyway okay now he's very um uh, anti-pan-african he's saying that niger delta needs to be its own state because it controls all the resources uh, I mean, well it doesn't control all the resources but it, it it has all of the resources as far as the oil and of course uh nigeria obviously is exploiting it the leaders uh, and the people in the Niger Delta are benefiting from it. I actually watched this uh, this documentary on Vice. You know, I know Vice at times is some bullshit. I don't know if you've seen it yeah, at all. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you what do you what do you, what are your thoughts on you know as far as uh, Niger Delta be, being its own, I guess, country and completely separating from uh, Nigeria? And then, of course, uh, can you be? Uh, a Niger Delta, and or if that's the correct term, and uh, uh, um, I guess protect the best interests of the Niger Delta, and also be a Pan African, because he's saying you can't do that. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, okay, uh, a couple of things. First, Niger Delta separating. I mean, in the Niger Delta itself, there are about at least five nations, five different groups. So you have the Robo, Shekiri, um, uh, uh, Isoko. Um, um, uh, Ijo, these are all people in the Niger Delta where the world comes from. They're all separate and they're all divided into different states. So to say the Niger Delta to break off means like a number of nations and states to break off and they wouldn't all do that at the same time or together because they're pretty much independent people themselves. Um, where I think he's coming from, as I truly believe he's Igbo, he would be... <laughs> <laughs> it would be along the lines of Biafra who want to secede. That's what it sounds like to me. Most of them sometimes don't like to come out and say the say Biafra, mm -hmm. but I believe from what I'm hearing, he's Biafra, and we all know what happened with Biafra, which is you know they tried to secede from the country, and it was a bloody civil war between 1966 uh, uh, for about two years, around 66, and about three million Igbos were killed. So a lot of them. Uh, and recently there's been someone called Nambi Kano, a guy who he started a radio station in the UK and he was talking about Biafra and he gained such a big following and he went back to the country and he basically rose up again this sentiment of secession and a lot of them came out from the woodworks and want, want to separate. So um, Niger Delta themselves are not calling for secession. Um, the Biafrans are, but they try to claim some part of the Niger Delta as also Biafra, which is not, not the case. But personally, what do I feel about the breakup of, of the country? Um, it's, it's a tricky one because uh, most people I speak to don't, don't, 
don't agree with Nigeria disintegrating or breaking up. Mm -hmm. But what I think of, um, the way I envision it, I, I think there needs to be a restructure. So Nigeria has about 400 uh, or so cultures or tribes or ethnicities, 400 or so. They're all independent nations, um, in the sense of description of what a nation is. So, and then when you look across Africa, there are almost 10,000 or more different cultures and individual nations. What I believe or what I think, what I envision is there should be 10,000 nations. 10,000? Yeah, 10,000 nations. That's a lot. Under, yeah, it's a lot. But that just means 10,000 representatives into a grand super state that is Africa. So it would be like, I don't know if you ever saw Star Wars where uh, one of those, where, where they hold their intergalactic um, senate and you see like this big huge room with loads of seats. So I, I envision that sort of thing. Obviously there'll be subcommittees and smaller entities, but mm -hmm. I think every nation should be able to con contribute and to have their own self-determination. That, that's what I feel. All right. So let's jump right into it. The uh, I mean, a lot of people in the chat room say ten thousand. That's that's a lot of nations. But let's let's uh, let's jump right into it. The Bantu Federation. Break down to us what the Bantu Federation is. Okay. Well, Africa um, currently, some would say, and I, I would say, there are basically two predominant peoples. There's the Afro-Asiatic and then there's the Bantu people. The Bantu people reside primarily sub-Saharan Africa. So if you look at Africa, when you see the Sahara and then where you start to see vegetation and going down, that's where most of our population are. Um, some say they originate from Congo, directly some say from Nigeria, between the border of Nigeria and, and Cameroon. Right. But they spread right. out across, across that region and pretty much all of us are Bantu. Um, but black um, sub-Saharan Africans. So obviously the, the spread or the disbursement of, of, of all of us due to different wars, um, famine, colonialism, slavery, has caused us to disperse, form new languages, new cultures, et cetera, et cetera. So I feel with this, this drive now, with the African Union breaking down borders, mm -hmm. making a continental free trade zone, um, um, giving uh, visa-less travel to everyone, um, is sort of kind of bring everyone back together. And I'm thinking, I'm looking into the future. And what I'm seeing is soon there would not be no longer, there would be no Nigeria or Cameroon or Ghana right. okay. anymore. They're all going to be just open. And all you have left is your ethnic nationality. Okay. That feeds into a greater Africanism. So there'll just be two steps. There wouldn't be I'm Igbo and then I'm Nigerian and then I'm West African and then I'm African. Right. Just Igbo and then African. Let, let me ask you, so, so I won't forget. And then please, and I'm sorry for cutting you off. Where would religion play into this? Because you know what, Africans, it's not only I'm an Igbo, uh, Nigerian, Niger Delton, um, West African, then it's I'm a Christian, Muslim, or whatnot. But finish your thought and, and we'll go ahead and throw that piece into it as well. Okay, so so yeah, um, uh, you know, there's already um, ECOWAS, which is the West African type of regional body or state, and right. they're already thinking of making a, a a currency, possibly called the ECO. And in West Africa or East Africa, they're already trying to make an East African community as well, which they're going to dissolve about six countries into that state. So we can see that this is taking shape, it's taking form. And I'm just looking into the future, and I'm thinking, what would take the place of the African Union then? And it will only make sense for it to be this Bantu Federation that I'm talking about. That's an identity that everyone can say we have a common um, unified um, existence with, uh, one that would help to bring us together and get rid of any other uh, similarity or, 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 or divisions like Christianity or Islam. And, and to go to uh, Christianity and Islam, I think a renaissance has to has to take shape and happen. I personally would like the death and the end of 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 religion being at the forefront of, of anything to do with Africa or African peoples. It has done nothing for us than impoverished and slave and and break our minds into into not having a sense of self 
So um, I think religion is the last shackle that, uh, that we have to break in order for us to get free. I agree. I agree. Now, how can a Bantu Federation benefit us versus an African Union? Like what what's the um, I guess the pros of having a Bantu Federation over, we'll say, was it currently in place like the African Union? Um, it'd be more efficient. Um, we'll have more of a vision and a direction. Right now, the African Union is just um, it's inefficient. They don't think far ahead. I think that the, the policy they have going forward now is something called Agenda 2063. So they're not thinking past 2063, whereas other nations like the United States, they think 200 years ahead. We need to be thinking way, way, way ahead. Um, I think the African Union is corrupt. Um, they don't have people with any vision. We've right. seen what happened with um, the slave trade in Libya. You didn't hear a peep from, from anyone in particular or just one or two people. Um, we have the, the, the agenda of the African Union is not to unite the whole of Africa worldwide, whereas I believe the Bantu Federation can. We saw Haiti trying to mm. join the African Union mm. and they were rejected mm. by, by no, the African Union. Go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. I just wonder what that was, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Haiti so trying to join the African Union and then they were rejected. rejected. And I, I, I think that's just a big shame. And it just begs the question what, what, what they're doing there. It's like an echo. Somebody, it's a, somebody. Not me, not me. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I, 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 I just question what the, what the mandate is for, for the African Union, because it's definitely not to, to unite or, or to, to take us back to greatness. It's just to, from what I see, it's just to, build these business models for foreign western powers to be able to do business easier or or or, 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 or with more ease in, 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 on the continent but it's not for the people we have countries buying up vast swathes of land to be able to set up um their businesses build factories and bring their workers there and then they sit they sit there and they let this happen but when you give it down to the people, one thing the Bantu Federation will definitely allow is it's going to allow power to be at the local level, not at the center, as, as governments and or countries have it right now. Right now, you'd only have the central government of the whole continent, and then individuals will be able to govern themselves at a lower level, not have to fight over resources with different people or, or various groups in the country. And right. also, you can now you can be able to form um, alliances as you see fit. So say someone, uh, an Igbo person, can want to form a treaty or an alliance with someone in Kenya, whereas now you would have to do it through the agreement of the country of Nigeria, whereas now we're in the Bantu Federation, you can just form an alliance with them and form a mini community to do business, if that's the way you see fit. And it would be a very flexible, fluid relationship going across the continent. So... Someone asked a great question in the chat room. Arabs, uh, I'm guessing Ethiopians, uh, Eritreans, Somalians. When it comes to the Batu Federation, what role would they play? Well, Ethiopians, um, they, they, they would, oh, I see, because they're African. They, they don't consider themselves Batu. They don't consider themselves Batu. From what I understand. Uh, that's, that's true. Um, not all of them are Bantu. In fact, most of them aren't Bantu. Um, but what I, what I see is a lot of them have a split, split allegiance because currently the groups in the north, north of Africa have an alliance with the Arab League. So I don't understand right. how you can have an African Union and then you can have some countries with the African Union and then with the Arab League. So they would have to prove their allegiance and they would have to leave the Arab League and there would have to be some concessions made if they were to join. But initially the Bantu Federation would be only for Bantu. Because as it stands or anyway, there is a there's a two state Africa. There is northern hemispheric Africa, which is right. Arab and Sahara, which is not. So that hasn't changed. That is it's not up to us to change it for them. They have to prove their 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 worth, just like how Morocco was trying to join uh, ECOWAS West Africa and they weren't allowed. 
because you can't oh, be I part of an Arab league. I didn't. You know what? That makes sense now. Okay. Why weren't they, why weren't they allowed? Because they they are Arab, I guess, or identify as Arabs before Africans, or no, no. I mean, it, it was it was put merely on business business terms. Uh, Nigeria was the one who who really blocked that move um, because they it was merely it was e economic because they didn't want um, uh, European goods which come in through Morocco would would flood um, the West African um, Union. And then, obviously, Nigeria being the biggest player in, in West Africa, it would affect their economy. So I think that's, that's what I believe is the real reason. Okay. I have the other two brothers on mute right now because there was, there was just a lot of noise in the background. But uh, whenever you guys are ready to join in. Uh, Can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you now. Go ahead. Good, good, good. Hey, guys. Uh, this is George. Uh, I, I, I'm the, I guess, the, the, the brother uh, to ego in this situation, we 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 discuss these kind of things very often. Mm -hmm. um, I have my own stance on these situations, especially especially this subject. Um, just a background quickly. I um, guess I'm 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 born in Britain, uh, Ghanaian background, mm -hmm. raised in a Nigerian background, background also from the Niger Niger Delta also. So I've got perspectives on different angles. Um, yeah. Uh, the way Ego has put this um, this idea actually comes across quite well and quite well, 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 well scripted. Not in a bad way, but it's, it's, it's come, it's come, it comes across, it comes across very nicely and stuff. Um, the thing I have an issue with right. is the idea that tribes, tribes running themselves, because I feel to some degree, and I, I throw it to you guys as well, um, that not all tribes. Are on the same level in terms of their development. If if they were, then these ideas could run fine. But what you will find that obviously we, we give a lot of terms and names to these people, and we call them this group, that group, that group. You know, you know, kind of thing. But in actual naturality, now they, you know, for any any group of, group of people to 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 look to to manage themselves or to do anything with themselves, they need to be at a certain level to really do that. So. Um, uh let's say for instance let's say you said these 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 guys a bunch of guys with to to start can you hear me yeah i hear yeah, you fine it was, uh, okay it was, uh, okay let's say let's say now just put it in concert let's say okay we're now we want to take some people from new york and people, people from brooklyn yeah to now manage themselves like if you see people from brooklyn because they're all from brooklyn they all they all talk like brooklyn people so they're gonna manage themselves. They're they're gonna be able to be doctors. They're gonna be like um, they're gonna know how to do law. You know, like all these things are are things that that develop out of like larger, um, larger experience civilizations and groups of people. You know, it can't come from like pockets of 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 just groups of people, but really through the experiences of many people, and that accumulates to the information we have now. And you see how the world is running now. So. When and like if, if we talk if we talk about African countries, yeah, having their own chance to run themselves, I always ask the question: Is what indications have you seen from any of the groups, really, any of the major groups, that they can run themselves? You know, are 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 the Ibos, for instance, fully fled, um, writing their own languages, writing books in their own languages? Are they teaching their kids, and then somehow Nigeria is holding holding them back? from doing this stuff? No, they're not. Now, Ibos are not going out of their way to make sure that all the children can speak Ibo, all the children, children can write Ibo, or uh, they're pervading that, they're pervading uh, a type of thinking which is only coming from Ibo backgrounds. If you were teaching someone, okay, uh, I'll change it over again, uh, a Yoruba, Yoruba person, you know, I'll you know, what, what what is a Yoruba, what is a Yoruba business language? What, 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 what is Yoruba business me methodology? You, you probably wouldn't find much about it. You would find maybe a Nigerian methodology, but you wouldn't find a specific one to a group. So how can we start, start now start discussing people should go and have their own time when they don't have, they, they, they're not there yet. That's That was my point. So um, the question is, is do we, oh, what, what will be the indications to say that these groups can look after themselves? Okay, you, you know what? If, even though, if, if I could just come in. Go ahead. You say yeah. they're not there yet. Even though I, I don't agree with that. But then, how would you ever get there if you don't start? How would you ever get there? Israel, how many, how many, how many million people are in Israel? 
Oh, no. There, maybe, there, there, maybe, there, maybe, are, there maybe, are almost 30, 30 million Yoruba people, 30 million. Even Urobo, my group, which is not one of the largest, were 5 million. Some countries aren't even 5 million. So, mm. so, so the, 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 the excuse or the reasoning that they're not enough large of a group doesn't, doesn't hold any water at all. Oh, that, that is true. That is true. And when you say it like that, once again, that's a very good point. Then I would then say that, okay, this is actually with the other conversation we saw before with the Pan-African wet dream thing conversation. Like I was always asking like, okay, as much as it's important to have the chance for these groups to grow now, yeah, I would, I would think that it's more important that Africans grow. Okay. Would this move actually Im- speed up the improvement of Africans in general? By doing this, yes, you you yes. say because now we're not no one's fending for themselves. There's 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 something called a Garden of Eden syndrome. People have just pretty much taken their foot off the gas because there's there's just been oil and there's been natural resources everywhere. So people just literally just mine the oil, sell it out, and that's it. They haven't had to do anything else. But when you take that away, then you have to now start thinking and engaging and creating things and it's happening already there's there's mm-hmm. the media organizations there, there there's a there's a movie there's cinema there's there's um there's all of the types of allied uh, um, industries that are sprouting up and it will take time and it will get there look at kenya with impesa which which even the west can do right with their phone technology and payments so it will happen it's just a matter of time but you can't say we don't we're not as advanced therefore we shouldn't do it we only get advanced when we start doing it it's just as simple as that. So, uh, I mean, what you're saying, bro, I uh, I definitely understand what you're saying, but uh, my question is, is how long would it take? Um, how, how, how long do you think it would take? And also, what indications do you, are, are you seeing that lets you know that this is, the, now is the time to do this? Or when would it even be, was, or when uh, would be a time I'll, to do I'll, this? I'll, I'll tell you, all the, all the people in the diaspora and what they're doing. There's people in every strata and every sector of every industry, everywhere across the world. From every, you, you can't go anywhere in the UK. There's there are Nigerians that are surgeons, doctors, artists, actors, uh, engineers, uh, technicians, neuroscientists. They're every single. They're the same people. The same people. So you can't tell me that they're not ready. It's just because they don't have the opportunity and the facilities. That's all. It's that, but, you, but, you, but you're talking about. It's nothing but, to but, do with but, mine. But 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 you're talking but you're talking about a people. You're, you're, but you're, you're, the original conversation is about a group, a cultural ethnic group. The people, for sure, different. I, 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 I don't call them groups. They're, they're nations. They're nations. They're nations. They're not small groups. They're nations. The definition of what a nation is: people of similar cultural values, language belief system, whatever, all that means a nation. They're nations. They're mm-hmm. not tribes or ethnic groups. They're nations. That's what so a nation is. These, hey, these differences, brother, brother, these brother, differences bro. between the nations... Sorry, go on. No, I was going to ask, um, after I ask, and you can finish your statement, can another person come on? Can a Mecca come on? Um, it's up to you guys. That's Nandi. It's up to you guys. Go ahead. Go on. Go okay. on. Okay. All right, go go ahead, go ahead and continue. And then, and then, uh, John, can you are you are you still muted? The the other brother. How you hear me? Okay, we hear you now. Okay, good. Just want to make sure you're still there. But 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 guys, go ahead, go ahead and continue. Oh, you know what? Also, I thought about as well. Actually, um, was the fact that okay, so you split up into into a group, for instance. Now, yeah, it was more okay. So my, my, my real thought was about how do you foster intelligence within these groups? So for instance, yeah, it, like a smart person is born anywhere. It doesn't matter where you're born. You're born as a smart person, right? Okay. The person can be born in a piece of land. It can be born in the East. Another person, another, another smart person can be born in the West, right? If these two people, for instance, were now one would end up being, um, okay, let's, make it easier it's a Kenyan and the other person happened to be in a cultural group which is it which is a, a shanty for instance yeah how would they link up you know um to bring it down to a country level uh 
for instance, if you're in Ghana and the person is in the bottom half and he's now, you've now split up the regions now. Okay. We now have Ashanti regions and we ha now have Brunga Hafro regions. Yeah. The smart child in Brunga Hafro and the smart child in Ashanti, how would they ever meet up to a point that they they could then begin to actually uh, uh, utilize this, this intelligence to, to better the, 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 the the lifestyles of people you would end up having to have centralized points where people would go maybe to university or go to work but then you're saying they'll be in different countries then they'll be in different nations they're not different nations but they'll be in like that the, it, it'd have to be some kind of a, a sharing zone or something like that like a sharing space you're not going to have the person from bronga hafro come down to a, a shanty region to then live there and stay there that would defeat the whole purpose of the split up in the first place so, so how 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 do you feel to address the opp the opportunity you're taking away for people to actually who are smart to link up together? Because this is what you're finding in major countries, you know, the Americas and so forth and the other that people who are smart have the opportunity to link up together and do great great things. Okay, let me answer that quickly so I can let, let, let um, John John come on. Yeah. What, what I'm saying is the, is the opposite of that. When you're breaking it down and opening it up, then it's easier for people to link up, I for agree. people to I go agree. and speak and I'm, and, 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 Sorry to cut you off. I mean, what we're doing right now via uh, the World Wide Web, I mean, that right, uh, you know, platforms like this make it easier uh, to facilitate uh, intellectual discussions like we're having now amongst mm -hmm. everybody across the continent. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, I'm sorry. But th that's true, that's true. And you know why it makes it easier? We once we got the internet, and obviously that's that's the main basis of it. Another basis that we're we also, we also speak in English. If we weren't speaking English, we couldn't even talk right now. Probably, Correct. you'd either have to learn what I'm speaking, or you have to learn what I'm speaking for us to communicate. And one of us would lose our our ability to fully communicate what we're saying because we speak different languages. I would say this. Uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, the English to the, the language of the colonializer. Uh, is the predominant language, dominant language that's spoken across this planet. But people who are educated, especially Africans who are educated, the majority mm -hmm. of them speak English. So mm -hmm. I don't think that would be um, an issue uh, in regards to communication. So then, so then you're saying that we would then. I mean, I'm only, I'm only, I'm only hashing out this idea, isn't it? Really, I like it. I think it's a nice idea. Uh, I'm just trying to work out some of the pitfalls that I'm seeing in some of the, in the four pounds. So we are now in our own countries. We're all speaking our own languages, right? We're right. now going to find our, our medium language to, to communicate between each other is going to be English. No, no, no. Okay. 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 I would say, yeah, let, me, I, let me come in. I would make the medium language Swahili, but <laughs> for the time, I'm just let saying, me, the time let, people, let, let, know, let me, this is um, the majority of, I would say, black people on this planet speak English, we mm -hmm. could start with English until everyone learns one central language, whatever that language might be. Okay. Uh, let me let me come in. Let me come in. I listen to the, the conversation back and forth. Um, I think the, the fundamental questions we need to ask ourselves is how do nations form? How do nations form? We all speak English on this platform. How did English become the predominant language in the world? English and French, how did they become the predominant language? It's strictly, it's, it's by, it was by conquest. And the same, the same thing also pertains when you come to, when you're looking at it from Africa. Okay? The same thing pertains when you look at, look at it from Africa. There are different languages that have been spoken across the continent. You made mention of Swahili, but um, well, a lot of people don't know that Swahili equally has a, a, Arab, some a, Arab origins as well. So there's a fusion between uh, languages in East Africa and an and Ar Arabic language that, you know, that fused together. That fusion led to the emergence of, of, of Swahili, which is spoken predominantly in East Africa. Okay. So if we're looking at um, languages from that perspective, we literally have to look at the way languages um, were formed and how it leads to nationhood as well. Um, there are numerous examples I can give. There are numerous examples on how people can come together. Because I think that it's, it's about nationalism. Think about, about an ideology, about a group of people, regardless of their social 
or ethnic or tribal background coming together for for a belief it might be nationalistic it might be pan-african whatever uh, both of them are agreeing to come together we saw it in in south africa during the times of the mshaka zulu and how it was able to annex a lot of the lands in southern africa and made those lands begin to speak kosa or even even though they don't speak kosa they speak languages that were that had certain tributaries with with, with the kosa language or or, or, or is it the, the Ibas in, in, in West Africa or in, the, in, in, in what we today know as Nigeria who had running battles with the Benins and the, and the Dahomeys in Togo that took Yoruba language across its origin from Nigeria to other parts of West Africa or is it the Ashanti? So we've seen how language is spread and how it has been used as a, as a tool to bring people together and, and, and as a tool for a common ideology. There is a crisis now raging in Cameroon predominantly by in southern Cameroon, by a, by a group or multiplicity of ethnic group that speak English. And collectively, they identify themselves as Anglophones. Yes. That's what they call themselves. I they call themselves. They call themselves Anglophones. Okay? So they don't, they don't see themselves, in terms of, if you want to look at it from, from an ethnic or social, uh, social uh, anthropological point of view, they don't see themselves as brothers with their francophone speaking um, neighbors, even though they share the same country with them. The majority of the people in Cameroon speak a French, but this tiny elite of, of people who are predominantly in the southern part of Cameroon speak Anglophone. So in terms of ethnicity, they identify themselves with other people, including ourselves here on this forum, who speak English. Okay? So I think that, you know, we need to look at it from that perspective. The strong would always dominate the weak. So we will not always have a multiplicity of uh, of, of of different um, languages, or we would have to agree on a particular language, and that has to be either agreed or something that has to be enforced. Sadly, okay. that's uh, that's great. Real, real quick, I just want to make an announcement. Uh, everybody, thank you for joining us. Please get the likes up as you enter the chat room. Share, like, super chat if you can. Also, brother Emeka is also in the chat. Emeka, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, uh, but uh, brother, go. go okay, good, brother. Go ahead and finish what you're gonna say, and then Mecca, you could you could come on and, and give uh, you know your thoughts on everything. Okay, um, I, I was going to say with regards to the, to the language, um, what we can do, and I, I can see some people are saying, um, is there any points in in adopting say Swahili or just keep it English? But I wanted to give an, another angle because in Indonesia, um, some time ago when they got their independence and they wanted to unify the people they created a language they took they actually hired um, 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 uh, um, experts language experts to take bits and pieces of the different cultures or tribes if you'd call it and they merged it and created a language that they all use to this day so that's something that could happen it could be a, a bit of swahili a bit of twee uh, a bit of yoruba on this side on one line they teach it in the schools for 60 years and everyone will know it for sure so th there are many ways to do it i mean in nigeria they they they, 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 they insist on three languages which is yoruba Igbo, hausa whereas they're like probably 300 plus you know that doesn't make sense so you should be able to pick and choose or decide on one that we could all use unfortunately for now it's just english oh, cool. All right, Mecca, how do, you, how do you feel about the uh, discussion we're having? Um, good evening, gentlemen. Um, I came, I joined in late, so I didn't catch up uh, with everything, but... Uh, hey, Mecca's the brother from the Niger Delta who, who believes in separation at all costs, which I don't agree with, but that's how he feels. Yes, yes, I'm a separatist. You, you know, my, I, I, I did... I did I mean, this, this 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 is one for Namdi. Excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. Go no, ahead. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I said this is one for Namdi, my friend. Never mind. Go ahead. Okay. So anyway, um, I think we Africans were making a big mistake. We don't even know what nations mean. Uh, in Europe, the first nations were. England and France, um, due to the, the fact that they had these feudal systems, um, the, the um, Duke of Normandy um, 
uh, William the Bastard became uh, William the Conqueror of England. And later on, the Plantagenet family were um, dukes of Normandy and kings of England at the same time, which led to the Hundred Years' War later. And um, they had French people fighting other French people um, in the name of feudal overlords and feudal um, royal systems. So at, at, after the Hundred Years' War, um, they had this nationalist um, mindset of why should I fight my fellow Frenchman? Why should I fight him because of an English uh, lord? Um, my English lord speaks a different language and I am fighting my fellow Frenchman because uh, he's the overlord in my area. And that is how nationalism was born in Europe, for example. People understood that um, linguistic, ethnic, and cultural um, homogeneity is uh, of um, utmost importance to have a functioning nation. A nation is a, a group of people that have same cultural heritage roots, linguistic roots, history, and all this. So um, I know that you guys are Pan-Africanists. I was once a Pan-Africanist and I'm a realist today. Pan-Africanism is more of idealism. Realism um, does not permit me to, to, to further um, believe in Pan-Africanism for various reasons. We have seen the way Nigeria has failed and we continue to fail as long as it remains in the status quo. Even the restructuring we are talking about in Nigeria is not going to work because you can't restructure people with a seventh century mindset in the north and uh, other areas. So we have different values, different value systems. We have some areas that have monarchies in the west, in the midwest. We have um, them also in the Fulani Caliphates. We have more uh, democratic um, uh, value systems in the south, south in the Niger Delta. And uh, it's, it's, it's quite impossible to even think of um, creating some form of harmony in this kind of um, uh, a diverse and heterogeneous uh, habitat. And Nigeria is more yeah. diverse than Europe. Nigeria is more diver diverse than Europe. Um, let us tell us ourselves the truth. How can Nigeria be more diverse than Europe? Yes, it is. Because yeah. Nigeria... Yeah, look, can I... Can I, 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 I like, so, like he go... Like, like he good men say. Emeka, let him, let him, let him, let him, let him respond. Emeka, let him respond. All right, go ahead. Okay, like, like Igu mentioned, this is one area I'm definitely very passionate about. Yeah, uh, but I'll just quickly respond quickly. There is this myth about um, this homogeneity that exists in Europe, that was that existed in Europe and that created the um, the basis for the the nationalism that swept Europe in the 16th century. Europe has never been. None of the European states that we see today has never been uh, national, nationalistic or homogeneous. England, where I reside, was never homogeneous. The Romans named England Brit, Bruton. Bruton, that was the original Latin name they gave to them. Because of the different tribes that existed there, they, they, they felt that those tribes were largely ignorant and they, gave, they, they, named, them, they named them Brutes. I, after a while, the, the tribes that we today know, we don't, we don't, Europeans don't like to use the word tribe or ethnic group, that those words are now uh, reserved for Africa. The tribes that existed in, 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 in England, the Anglophones, the, the Anglo-Saxons, began to now um, um, interbreed or intermarry with their Saxons neighbor across the, the French Canal, in the French, in the French um, Canal. So we now had a fusion of ethnic groups, which we today know as the Anglo-Saxon. Okay, so England has never even been homogeneous. We have the same thing in modern day Russia. Russia today that we know is, that we, that we, that we see today, was never a homogeneous state. It's a fusion of two major ethnic groups, the Vikings and the Slavs. The Slavs are from mostly from Eastern European countries, so Slovenia and the Czech Republic and then Croatia. Even Germany that we see today uh, wasn't homogeneous. They were a fusion of different ethnic groups, the, 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 the Goths and the, the, the Visigoths. These are the two major ethnic groups that led to the, to, the, to the fall of the Roman Empire. So Europe has never been homogeneous. Even in, um, um, even in the United States, there were different ethnic groups that, 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 that settled in the, the US. You had the, the, the Native Americans, you had the Dutch who settled, settled in uh, 
predominantly New York. You had the English who settled in, in Massachusetts. You had the Eastern Europeans who settled in the areas where, where there was, there was the, the areas where the likes of um, Andrew Carnegie began to build the U.S. Steel. You had the Spanish who settled down in in in, in what we today known as Texas. We have um, the Germans who settled down in areas like in Minnesota. So all these different European ethnic groups came together under one leader called George Washington, and they, they formed a nation. A nation known as the United States that we 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 we, we all we, we all know today. So the concept of the fact that because um, we have different uh, African countries who have different um, ethnic um, background, including Nigeria, cannot be a nation. I don't tend to agree with that. I'm from the Niger Delta myself, but I believe that nationalism is an is an ideology that is built. Nationalism is an ideology that is built. I went yeah. to Turkey. I this went to Turkey. Let me, just, let, me, let me just quickly round up this. I went to Turkey not too long ago, and I and I began to research about the origins of Turkey. Turkey used to be known as the Ottoman Empire, and there were different ethnic groups that existed in Turkey. You had the Christians from the Byzantine, you had the Greeks, you had the Cyprus, then you had the Arabs who came from the other parts of the Mediterranean who settled in modern-day Turkey. All these people formed what we today known as the Republic of Turkey. Under one leader, who they today know, who we today know as the Ataturk, the international airport in Istanbul is named after him. Again, a multiplicity of different ethnic groups, from different backgrounds, from different religion. Even they came together to form one country that we today know as um, 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 as, as, as Turkey. I agree with you on one angle, which is nationalism was the ideology that the Europeans and other countries used to overthrow their overlord, i.e. their monarchy or their feudal leaders. So I agree with you on that, but, but nationalism is an ideology that we can use to bring our people together. Nationalism and Pan-Africanism. What, how do I, what do I have to do with Mohammed Hazma, for example, in the Lord? What connects me with him? He, he believes in a, in a sultan, uh, so, sorry, in an emir, he believes the word of the enemy is sacrosanct. I have a council of chiefs to Yahweh land. Um, he is a Muslim, I'm a Christian. He, he he has a different value system. The way his education, his everything is different from me. Everything is different. How will you say which nationalism? What will what, where is the common ground? That's a good question. What what will be the common ground? Go ahead, brother. Well, we're black, that's number one, but go ahead. That is that is enough. Oh, there we go. That's enough. That's what I'm saying. That's enough. <laughs> that is that's what I don't understand. Like you, you like if we're pushing for these things, I I get it because well, in your in the Niger Delta case, it's all about this oil. That's what it's about. It's not because I want to do. I want to drive. Oh, I, I, I want to drive on the left side. Let him finish. Let him finish. It's 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 it's, 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 it's not to do with things like I want to drive on the right side of the road or I believe that the way they do toilets is incorrect in Nigeria so I want to do it this way it's not, nothing to do with that it's about just it's just about this oil thing and this money stuff because if it wasn't for these things the pushing for what because what what ideologies or what me, or what things what things do the Niger Delta have not I'm not putting down the Niger Delta but I'm just saying really what things do Nigeria and Niger Delta have that they need to try and if, if they had their own time and their own way to, to to purvey they would what things would they are are they being stopped from brick from doing what, Nigeria, what things are Niger Delta is being stopped from doing other than running themselves what things take like what improvements can they not embark on that Nigerians are stopping them from doing the problem is this the problem is, the problem is simple pan-africanism the ideology of pan-africanism the bandwidth in Nigeria is very low Okay, so from the from the foundation, we missed it. Nigeria missed that that the opportunity to build upon that foundation. So we and the result of which we created a multiplicity of ethnic group who have allegiance only to their own ethnic group and their own region. Whereas we have in other African countries, including Ghana, including Tanzania. I mean, if you read this book, the destruction of of of, of black civilization. Um, um, uh, authored by uh, Dr. Chancellor Williams. You will see how it chronicles how the country named Tanzania was formed. Tanzania is a country that has a, 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 a Christian, Muslim, and different ethnic groups who, who settled there. But one man named Julius Nyerere fought to bring that country together. Today, all Tanzanians see themselves as one. 
They don't see themselves on the basis of ethnicity. They That's don't. true. That's true. They don't see themselves like, oh, I'm, I'm this from this tribe, I'm from that tribe. It's the same thing with, with the same thing Ghana, uh, Nkrumah did in Ghana. He broke down all those ethnic barriers and brought the country together. We saw we saw the same thing in Kwame uh, in, uh, in Guinea. We saw the same thing in uh, uh, in Kenya under uh, uh, Jomo Kayata. We saw the same thing in Egypt under uh, um, um, Gamal Abdul Nasser. These were leaders who brought down the differences between their country and brought them together. But unfortunately, in some some African countries, including Nigeria, that they did not get that foundation right. This is Especially the reason why they are, they the, 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 the average Nigerian cannot understand. I was discussing with Igwe earlier on, and I was saying the bandwidth for Pan-Africanism in Nigeria is very low. It's lower than even most part of Africa. A lot of people don't know no, that. Non-existent, not even low. Non-existent. It's lower. So people have their loyalty to their tribe and their ethnic group and their religion. That's what, what they have their own loyalty to. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but on the basis of what? I don't think. I don't think. Well, this is just my own point of view. I don't think if we're looking long term on how we're going to bring the uh, people Africans. across the continent and in the diaspora together, I don't think that's the way to go. Because we'll, if... we'll find we'll find a situation whereby we're gonna say, "Oh, I, I'm Yoruba. He's Yoruba. He's not Yoruba." Then we'll begin to look at things from that lens. And I was listening to a video, uh, uh, um, a, a speech, um, um, a leading Pan Africanist said in the U.S. recently. He talked about the differences between African nationalism and Pan Africanism. I think we need to we need to understand the differences between both of them: African nationalism and Pan Africanism. And even if you want to break it down further. Ethnic identity, ethnic loyalty, ethnic nationalism, which what is, is what we nation? see, which what is what is we it? see first in, um, in um, unfortunately, uh, countries. Yeah. All right, Rebecca, go ahead and uh, go ahead and respond, uh, Rebecca. Um, on oh, someone said the Niger Delta this and that. Um, yes, it's about oil, and so what? Nigeria is like. Oh, come on, man. No, no, no. That's not a way. That's not a reason to start breaking up a country then no, and having what, all this conversation. Who created, what, who created that country? You call yourself a Pan Africanist and you are promoting a British product, a British trade zone? Come on. Which, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's a, what's a British product? What's British? Nigeria is a British trade zone. Nigeria okay, okay. okay. It's a British trade zone created by Fred Lugard, Flora Shaw, owned by the Royal Niger Company, which is today's Unilever. And you, Nigeria was created by white people in London. The name was created by white people in London. You're still trying to promote a, a colonial product? I mean, come on. This is the first thing. That's ridiculous. Secondly, Nigeria is a liability. Okay, no, that, that, that one I understand. That one I understand. Go on. Nigeria is a liability to my region. Nigeria is a liability to the Niger Delta. We never need Nigeria, but Nigeria needs us. That's the first thing everybody everybody knows this. Because 90% of the budget comes from us. In my own village, I agree. I have, I have oil. They're paying um, to my cousins 30,000 naira, which is not up to 100 euro, just to do some rubbish staff work. Why they bring in people from the west uh, of Nigeria to to, to earn uh, fat um, fat dollars with, with uh, foreign experts? A lot of injustice in our region. Headquarters in I agree. Lagos. I, I, I agree. There's a lot of injustice. Headquarters in Lagos. While the oil is from our place, we built Lagos with our money. We built Abuja with our money. We built Kano with our money. Yet. There's nothing in our place. We don't need Nigeria. Nigeria needs us. So, um, how can in Germany it's called um, der Schwanz kann nicht mit dem Hund wackeln? How can the tail be shaking the dog instead of the dog to be shaking the tail? So, um, let's be very honest. Um, yes, it is hard. This it, you might call it a selfish reason, but self-preservation is very important and it's a human instinct. So. Why should we continue, for me, my people, and for my region, my own region, continue to sacrifice and suffer in the name of unity? 
And why should I talk about a nationalist agenda, a, a pan-Nigerian agenda, when I'm suffering in this pan-Nigerian agenda? I've been deceiving myself, talking about one Nigeria, displeasing myself, displeasing my people, trying to please other people that don't value us. So it is time to, for us to um, please ourselves, please my people, please my region. This is the age of nationalism. It has been kicked off. There's no going back. Europe went through this uh, when the Ottoman Empire broke, when the uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire broke. You saw the different nations, Czech, Slovakia, Hungary, uh, Moldavia, all these nations came out and they are all peaceful now. So we have this mega colossus in Nigeria, a big sick um, man, just like the Ottoman Empire was a big sick man. And today we have Bulgaria, Serbia, uh, Montenegro, all this from the Ottoman Empire. And that is how Nigeria is going to break up. And we're going to have more, maybe not absolutely homogeneous, but more homogeneous nations according to cultural, linguistic, at least. Can I, just back on can, 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 I, can I ask a question to the panel? Uh, it, it, do you think uh, what a, a Mecca is proposing, is it selfish in regards to um, the resources of the Niger Delta only benefiting the Niger Delta and staying within the confines no, of the no, Niger it's Delta? Not, it's, not, it's not selfish. It's, um, I actually support the idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually right uh, because um, the resources from the Niger Delta has been used to exploit the people there. I mean, you only need to visit the Niger Delta to see the, the, the level of poverty. The, 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 Somebody's echoing if um, in the background. If you're, you're watching the replay, if you can just mute that, uh, the other, uh, the screen or the, the live stream that you, if you're watching it. Yeah, so he's Go actually ahead, right ahead. when he said the, um, the resources in the, in the Niger Delta has been um, has not been um, used to the, for the full benefit of the people residing in that region. And it's been largely used to exploit the people living in that region. So I totally agree with him um, on that. But I think that there, 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 there are solutions to the problems of that. Um, what one of the problems Nigeria has is that the 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 the, the country doesn't, even though it was it's supposed to, the current structure was supposed to be modeled to operate as a true federalist state, where each of the components are supposed to be autonomous in how they generate their own revenue, that is sadly not the case. So it's it is a democratic country, but still has military hey, hey, infrastructure. Real, real quick, brother. So, uh, somebody, if you're watching the replay uh, on YouTube, outside of the, um, I guess, the Google Hangouts, if you could, I guess, mute it, because it's um, you can hear the replay in the background. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's. Oh, just, just continue. It's uh. Yeah. Maybe somebody can turn their speakers down or. Yeah. Yeah. But what what I just wanted to mention to Emeka was that there are solutions that can be preferred to address the injustice there. He talked about the Austrian Hungarian Empire and how the Austrian Hungarian Empire broke down. And, but I just wanted to point to him, point out to him that the reason why the Austrian Hungarian Empire broke down was because the Serbians, there were Serbian nationalists living within Austrian or uh, Austrian Hungarian Empire who wanted autonomy, who wanted control on how the resources in their own region was being uh, managed. But the Duke of uh, the, the Duke and uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the Archduke Ferdinand and his princess were opposed to granting regions within the austrian hungarian empire autonomy so that was one of the reasons why the austrian hungarian empire collapsed its refusal to change with the changing times its refusal to grant autonomy to the various regions he talked about the fact that nigeria is a british creation i agree with him okay but he also has to remember that britain today is a roman creation it was a creation of the, of the world but the Roman Empire, yeah, the name Britain and the name Britain, I told you, I mentioned earlier on, the name Britain is Roman. It's not even English. It's Roman. They gave them their name. And Britain, if you don't know, in Latin means brute. People who are foolish, land of foolish people. Because the Romans felt that the people who were living in Britain were fools. They had no use for them. In short, another word for fools is barbarians. 
Those are the words that the Romans used to describe people who were yeah, living in England. Hold on, hold on, second, um, uh, hold on one second, brother. Um, brother Ego, I think it's you. You got to mute yourself. It's the uh, the background noise is coming from your on your end. Oh, really? I, I, don't, I don't have the video on. Yeah, but for some reason it's still coming from your end. I don't know why. But if you okay. mute it, and then when you have, when you want to come on, you can unmute it. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, go go ahead, brother. Yeah. So the solution I think to addressing the injustices, and not just only in Nigeria. Okay, I want to point this out because for our viewers who are watching from around the around the world and around the continent, it's not just. I mentioned earlier on to your um, about to yourself, Uhuru, about what was going on in uh, in the Ethiopia. Or how the, the Tigrans in Ethiopia were essentially controlling the resources in Ethiopia to the detriment of the Romos, who accounts for about 40% of the population. So you have the Tigrans taking over the land, the resources, and all the political and economic appointment to the detriment of the Romos. Okay? The Romos have been protesting just the way you see people in the Niger Delta. But in the case of the Niger Delta, it's even gone worse. People are taking arms, kidnapping, and all kind of other kinds of environmental degradation has taking place. So this 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 problem that we see in Nigeria is a microcosm of what we see happening across the continent, even in southern Cameroon as well, okay? These are the people who, at the point when they had their referendum in 1961, they chose to succeed from Nigeria and join Cameroon. And one of the reasons why they chose to succeed and join Cameroon was because the then president of Cameroon promised that they were going to give them autonomy when they do, when they merge with Cameroon, when they do merge with Cameroon. But that didn't happen. As, as, as they began to go through this new, the birth of a new nation, um, that, 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 uh, that formal agreement broke down. So again, we begin to, we, we are seeing rather at different parts of the, in different parts of the continent, regions who are clamoring for more autonomy on how their resources is being run. And because the authorities are not listening to them, they are demanding for their own nation states. Mm, it's true. This is true. So can I say something on uh, Austria? Well, hold on, let, let the brother uh yeah, I'll finish, I'll finish. You can make his point, yeah. Let, let the brother uh Emeka go ahead and make your point and brother ego. Uh you, you can come on in. Is that is that all right, brother ego? That's cool. Okay, Emeka, go ahead and finish your point, and brother ego will come in. Well, we have one problem. People disrespecting ethnic nationalities within Nigeria. I mean, um, okay, in the Austrian um uh, Hungarian setup. Um, the Austrians and Hungarians saw themselves as overlords over the entire region, and um, they didn't want to give this Slavic, other Slavic, um, actually Slavic nations, um, their their own autonomous setting. So they were like, okay, we have Austrians, we have Hungarians, then we have these other Slavs, and now in Nigeria we have. We have the Alsas, we have the Yorubas, we have the Igbos, the Wazobias, we call them. And at the end of the day, nobody will give me, as an Ihoroa man from the Niger Delta, from River State, my own, my own special treatment I deserve. Nobody can treat me the way I would treat myself. So I don't see why we should continue to um, play along in this system. Um, also, Hungary broke because they couldn't manage this extreme heterogeneous setup, and Nigeria will break as well because Nigeria can never manage this extreme heterogeneous setup. We are all deceiving ourselves. We are all trying to um, save what we cannot save. It's going to break one way or the other. There is no way. Yes. I was, I was saying that I, I, I think, I do think, even though you're, you, what you're saying is highly relevant, and I do think Nigeria's situation is particularly perilous. I think we're getting a little bit knuckled down to the original concept of this conversation, which is about nations and and, and, and ethnic group nations across Africa and stuff, really. What is, um, the, what is the definition of a nation? Can you give me that? It'll be a, it'll be a, it'll be a, group, a group of people. Believing, believing in a in one ide in one ideology, or uh, uh, yeah, one believing in one ideology, going in one kind of direction. Ideally, that's what I'll consider a nation. Well, a nation is a group of people that are related to each other. I think. You okay, know that. that's that's 
I think that may, may, maybe that's in a different way of putting into it. But the way the term of nation is above that. If you're, if you're talking about if you're talking about a group like a, a I would say an ethnic group, that's what I would relate what you what you just said. But Initial when I think of nations, I'm, think, I'm, I'm thinking of nations with differences of different backgrounds, but in together as one place. A nation is, a, is officially observed as a group of people who share the same cultural identity. They share the same but language. In the, in, the other, in the other conversation that we had, the other conversation that you had with, um, I forgot his name now, the, the, the guy from Ghana, he also said that, when does this stop? When you talk about that people identifying as groups, because everyone comes from somewhere. So at what point does this stop? You got to make, you make, you make, you make, you make, great, you make a great point with that. The, is the rule is that not? someone's, they want to stay there for 500 years? Okay, now you're officially a group. Or is it a thousand years? What defines your group? What makes you who you are? You you were not born as who you are. As a, as, as a group, you were never born as who you are. You were, uh, you were a constantly merging group of people that merge into something else. Okay. So, so, so what? So, when, when you when you when you're holding on to these things now, yeah, how, like, how how does how does how does it end? How does it start? You know, because if you're you're being complex about the situation right now, if someone came in was more complex about it, they could say that you're not from where you are right now, and that you're from I don't know, you're from middle or middle of Chad. Modern day Chad is where you guys are originally from. If someone would say no, I'm from the middle of a uh, modern day Congo. Like everyone moved from somewhere to somewhere else, so at this point in time now, what happens next? Right. Let, 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 uh, let, let's do this. Let uh, ego. Let ego. Uh, I know he wanted to uh, to jump in, and then uh, Mecca, you can respond. Ego, you there? Hold on one second. Are you there? Ego. We can't. We can't hear you. You got to. Oh, oh there yeah. You go. I think I was on mute. Um, yeah. Th this all goes back to. I mean, if we want to look, go far back. This is in response to, to George. We can go far back to ancient Egypt, or before that, or or, or, or between Kenya and Tanganyika. But I think we can clearly say we are Bantu, which goes back to mm -hmm. how the whole conversation started. So, if we start to identify with that identity. Mm. Wouldn't that make us strong? Wouldn't that take away all this division? Wouldn't that give us one identity we can stand for and say this is who we all are? I agree. And eventually that will dissolve all the other right. subgroups that formed over time. This is what right. I'm trying to say. But that's like this that that's that's then saying that we're all black. Yeah. Is that is that, is that enough? <laughs> that, that's enough. What wait, you want me to take stuff I would never take from a white racist imperialist from a black person just because he's black and I would just garnish it with the title Pan-Africanism or what, what? I mean, you want me to accept oppression for, for my people? Yeah, yeah but, but hold on, hold on, Mecca. But the thing is, under Pan-Africanism, we want to get rid of the oppression that you're speaking of. By oppressing me with a Nigerian... Nigerian status quo. No, we, we will get rid of that. Like, that's not when we talk pan Africanism, we're not talking about uh, still living in a system of, of subjugation like you guys are right now under Nigeria rule. That would be that would be gone. That would be rid of. What will be replaced with? And, and, and Mecca, I, I don't know if you came in at the very beginning when I was talking about this, but I, I don't know if you heard about Bantu Federation. Did, did you hear me? At, were you online at that point? I don't, I don't think he was. He wasn't. He wasn't. Go ahead and explain uh, Bantu Federation. Oh, okay, I'll do it very quickly so I don't bore, bore anyone. Mm -hmm. I was saying um, the vision that, 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 that I keep espousing is a Bantu Federation. You know, Africa is pretty much uh, Afro-Asiatic and Bantu, a Sub-Saharan African. So imagine if, uh, a, a future where Sub-Saharan African, there's, there are no borders, no countries, every independent nation, so there'll be Igbos, whatever, all these other ethnic groups or nations that will now form a kind of super state parliament into a one nation Bantu federation, all the way from Sub-Saharan Africa, all the way down to South Africa. Would that, would that solve your sort of problem where you have the power obviously at your nation state level, but then you feed into the next level above is just a super state and you feed into the super state. No countries, no regional countries, just- Can I, can I, can, can I jump in on this? 
Or Emma Carr, sorry, you've got something to say. I, 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 I want to see what only a meta things. If they're mm-hmm. not boundaries, we have no countries, right? Yes, no countries. Okay. No countries means no nations, right? Just, just ethnic nations feeding into the larger country or federation, which would be Bantu Federation. Okay, but we have the AU, right? The African Union. What's wrong with that? Why can't we have different nations with boundaries and we all meet in the AU? You could do, but then again, it wouldn't be the AU anymore, would it? So I'm just talking about the kind of transformation into something else. But do you already... Sorry to to interject. Let me just drop in quick something quickly. But everybody on the continent doesn't identify with Bantu. The Ethiopians don't describe themselves as Bantu. Somalians don't describe themselves as Bantu. I I, 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 I brought brought that up when when he first mentioned the Bantu, but go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. But But go ahead. But go ahead. The Egyptians don't describe themselves as Bantu. So, who are exa- who are these Bantu people you are referring to? Sub-Saharan, all the way down. So, that's so fine. Forget, I, I, forget I, I, that's Saharan fine. countries, Sub-Saharan, all the way down. And, and as I said at the beginning, Saharan countries already don't identify as African. A lot of them, they pretty much, as I said, they with the Arab see, League. They see, what, what, why, why, why I don't get this discussion now yet? It's almost like it's a void of military understanding and how things are actually going to pan out if you have these ideas. Like, if you have, okay, everyone splits up into own groups. That's fine, okay? We're all kind of functioning at a level. Okay, what, when you start developing things, some groups are You use the word splits up a lot. We should always remember, this is not splitting up to just be separate. This is coming down to uh, individual powers and understanding and then rejoining on our own terms. So we use the word split, but we never say re- rejoining. We use the word split or break up, and we never talk about coming together. This is about coming together a different way, a way we would have done it ourselves without the Europeans forming us. That's what I'm saying. No one is saying just split up, break up, everyone hate each other. No. Sometimes. Yeah, but that's sometimes. not based on this. It's not about... It's, I don't, I don't see it. When I say splitting up, I mean, and I'm just talking literally in the terms that people are in their own groups. Because if we're not, if we're not in their own groups, but then they are. They are yeah. in their own groups, even in right countries. Now, right, that's not right, now, right now, right now, I would say, main, yeah. I would say, I would say, I would say, typically, okay, to, to use an example, yeah, I would say many Nigerians on these, are the, in these groups here are more Nigerian than they are the ethnic group. Ibos are more Nigerian than they are Ibo. Orobos are more Nigerian than they are Orobo. So why are we discussing this stuff when the people who who like who potentially could be in these groups here are actually more of a nation's have a more of a nation state they got of a more of a nation state personality than they do of the of their cultural background. This is this evolution of people because like okay even if even if you have people split up into certain groups now right okay how are we going to govern our own development for instance how would people um, improve in certain things like okay. Um, I don't know, like a, an invention comes about. Okay, you have an invention. Let's say, let's go down to ground level, right? Just to make it easier. Yeah? Someone invents paper, okay? And the paper that was that was made is is in now what would be modern day Ivory Coast. Is he now going to start selling selling it to you guys so you guys will all make him richer? Yeah, because now you're not, you're not a country no more. You're not a nation. So the nation isn't kept within a, a, a border. It's now kept within an ethnic group. For instance, just say for instance, so now that person would now be the purveyor of paper. And so you would have to go to him all the time just to get paper. And that's fine. But that resentment, yeah, is exactly how Europeans come into the group because they now offer an avenue. This is what white people done back in the day. They offered an avenue for other groups to have over other groups. And that's what created the division. Am I lying? George, this- right. what, what are you saying? Look, Belgium has five different... Uh, uh, um, nationalities. That's in because one. they or that's because they right. are all, they, wait, 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 the group. Okay, go on, go on. Hey, wait, real, real quick, guys, I have to go and get my son. Don't we? We, we want right. to continue this conversation. Don't hang up. I will be back. Give me twenty minutes, guys. Please continue the conversation for everybody who's joining the chat room. But I will be back in twenty minutes. Don't don't go anywhere unless you guys just have to. Is that is that okay? okay? All right, cool. Yeah, cool. All right, I'll be right back. All right. Look. 
I, 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 the, the thing that gets me, George, is you keep saying, how could we develop? How could we create something? How could we use our ingenuity? That would happen because you're, 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 you're functioning as a, a subset of a bigger nation state. Doesn't mean you can't, you can't do all those things. I mean, it, 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 does, it doesn't make any sense. Ch China is an example. China is a huge country, even India. You know how many how many groups are in India? That how many independent states and people that speak different languages that operate aut autonomously? It's the same thing. There's a super state, but they're all independent at those levels. And it is mm -hmm. one billion people. One billion people. That's like a federation, a true but federation. Both people, both groups, both major nations. China, for instance, now, yeah. The only reason China is because of what it is right now is because they have gone through a valley, a valley that we are not willing to go through. The valley is that some people need to shut the hell up and succeed to the other groups that know what they're doing. Some groups don't know what they're doing. And you, I don't understand why this is so hard to understand. This is why China is where it is now. They, some people got beaten up, in, in lack of a better word, yeah, they got beaten up, but sat in the corner while other groups who did know what they're doing developed the nation. And then now they're reintegrated at a point now where everyone looks like they're all winning. But that has to happen. If you're not willing to do that, then you're not going to get to the next stage. That, that's, that, you know, that, 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 that's not the history of Africa, George. It's not, it's not history of Africa. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not an African thing. It's a world history. Thing. It's a human behavior thing, bro. If I'm if I if you're if I'm using a Hoover to Hoover the floor and you're brushing the floor with a with a straw with a, a set you know a straw broom, my Hoover is better than your straw. You can't tell me that you should have your straw broom and I should have my Hoover. We we'll use a Hoover from now on, and that's how we move forward. We're not going to sit there and half the house is dirty because you want to use a straw broom and my house is clean because I'm using a hoover. We're going to learn to use a hoover. This, oh, is, this, this, this is on the Bantu state, please. On the Bantu super mega nation. Yes. You know, I have, I as a Niger Dalton, I as a reverse man, I have serious problem with the North. The North now. You want to add more of their people to, to, to a, a system with me. I'm having problems with the ones uh, that are already there, and you're you're actually inviting more of them to come and have these extreme differences with the South, with my people. Is that not so? They would be the independent. They would be independent. The, the, on, the only, the only. The only benefit that they would get from being in this major or super state would be one army. Um, obviously, things to do with the territorial uh, transport communication, but those, but in w functioning day to day, you wouldn't have anything to do with any other people except you form alliances, treaties, and collaboration with those groups. And I said, it, it, would, it, would not, it would not be restricted to regions. So, if Igbo people find that they have, I don't know, they have rubber. And people, the Luo people in Kenya need rubber. Both of you form an alliance. You're not restricted by any borders anymore. You don't have to have anything to do with, with anyone. You don't have anything to do with. But at the same time, you still have, you meet at the super state um, senate. You communicate, collaborate, and forge ways forward on things that matter to the whole continent. So right now, you're, I feel what you're saying is you're trapped in having to forge policies with people in the north which you don't feel you have any connection to you have no similarities with no common ground and that is hard to deal with i can imagine but when you break up on those borders and you make it free you can look down south you know there, there are yoruba people in togo there are Igbo people in burkina faso so now they're, they're they're just restricted by 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 these these lines that's that, that, that's what i'm saying i don't know if you get in my point Oh, okay okay it's happened it's happened before let me just come in briefly okay it sounds very idealistic but it's happened before okay um when Mussolini invaded um Ethiopia so I like to look at things a bit more broad broadly when Mussolini invaded Ethiopia okay and for the African Americans who are watching us I want to also commend them for the role that he played during the battle between Ethiopia and and, and, and and Italy when Mussolini invaded Ethiopia he carved out certain parts of Ethiopia which um, the leader, the, the emperor, Haile Selassie, could not do anything at, at that point. In 1953, after the Second World War had ended, he now tried to bring back the part of Ethiopia that had been taken away 
by centuries of you know European European imperialism as well as, well as Arab invasion. Don't forget that Ethiopians have been having running battles with their Arab uh, neighbors for centuries. Okay, he tried to bring in that part, but they were not ready to integrate. They were not ready to integrate and become the larger part of Ethiopia. So they they went into a, a four decade battle with Ethiopia, and that battle was a battle between Ethiopia and Eritrea that culminated to the point in 1991 when Eritrean forces entered into Addis Ababa and captured Ethiopia. So the idea that oh um, when we break down all these borders, all these nation states, we will now be able to integrate. We will now be able to have ethnic groups with like mind. We have Kanuris, for example, in Nigeria. We have Kanuris in Chad. We have Kanuris in Niger. We have Fulanis in Nigeria. We have Fulanis in Guinea. Guinea, Guinea, for 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 our viewers, Guinea is the home, the homeland, is the spiritual Fulanis. home of the Fulanis, the Futajelon. It's the home. But coincidentally, they are not the, the ethnic group in power. It is the Manikas. The Manika is the predominant ethnic group. The current president of Guinea, Alpha Kodi, is Manika. So the, 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 the Fulanese do not hold sway. And even in Guinea-Bissau, in Guinea, where their spiritual homeland is. Okay? But I would say for a maker who has his misgivings about the Fulanese, Nigeria is the only place where we will say the Fulanese have been be given problems. There are no Fulani problems in Ghana. There are no Fulani. There are Fulani there, but I don't Fulani. We are not giving Ghana. them. I think we are not in Ghana. I'm talking about my people. Why should I be talking about? No, what I'm saying, I, I, I'm just trying to understand what I'm saying. They are, no, they are not giving in terms of in terms of troubles, in terms of um, political tension. Exactly, in terms of political tensions. The only reason why I think that over time we began to see this political tension between the the, the Fulanese in, in Nigeria and the uh, other ethnic groups in the south. Is because of the Usman Danfodio revolution, uh, Usman Danfodio jihad in 1804, which allowed the Fulanese to consolidate power in Nigeria and spread this power into different tributaries in Nigeria that they that they, 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 that they were to, that they, that to, we today known as Emirates. So you have Emirates of Yola, Emirates of Kano, Emirates of whatever. Okay, so it allowed them to consolidate power. But outside Nigeria, which is their political uh, their political uh, where they where they hold political sway. They don't they don't hold political sway even in their own homeland in, 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 in Guinea, as I mentioned. Okay. So um the idea that we will have a, a federation of all the Fulanese living in one configuration, I don't think that would happen. And I've pointed out an example of Ethiopia as a classic example. I equally pointed out an example. Shaka Zulu tried to do it in Southern Africa when he overran all the ethnic groups, including the Nembele and the Shona people in what today known as Zimbabwe. But an, a, a king there, a king in Lesotho, was brave, brave enough to stop the onslaught of, uh, of, 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 of Shaka Zulu. And he was able to bring the five ethnic groups that were living in that region together. That country today we know as, is now known as Lesotho. So the people, the, the king, King Moshueshue, was one of the kings who resisted the, the imperialistic invasion of Shaka Zulu. So again, uh, you can't. So you say Wakanda for a second. No, 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 no. I think I think it was from that. Um, I think um, the, 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 the the script from uh, from 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 that Black Panther was taken was taken from um, Shaka Zulu and the, his his, uh, his his battle with uh, King Moshueshue of uh, modern day Lesotho. So again. The idea of breaking down the current nation states and fusing them with the different, uh, because we have laws, we have laws in Kenya, we have laws in Tanzania, but because of the fact that you know the way Africa was 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 uh, was essentially configured during the Berlin Conference, we have different ethnic groups that now fall into different nation states. But breaking about that, breaking down that nation state and fusing them, I don't think it's going to be as easy as you think. Yeah, okay, so, so 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 for a question for okay, this is the so it's like a for and against kind of thing right now, yeah. Um for I'll give it to Ego because I like the conversation of the Bantu as opposed to just talking about the Niger Delta. So for the Bantu nation, for instance, yeah, in your estimations, what groups do you see in Africa so far, tribes that are autonomously or show indications that they're looking after themselves and they have an ideology that requires you know separation from the rest of the group 
Um, but 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 that but the, the point is not just to be separated from the group because you're better. The, the Bantu Federation, in my mind, is for the upliftment of all. There would be those. It's it's almost like the division of labor. So I understand Emeka's point. We don't feel people from the north are contributing mm -hmm. much to the country. There's very low education. Uh, uh, a lot of the resources are going up there. Pretty much uh, just financing. They're like Let's just speak it out. They're liability. No, no, not Nigeria. Not Nigeria. I'm not talking about groups in general. Uh, okay, group. group uh, well, as I said, it's for the upliftment of, of everyone. So e everyone has the, the expertise. And some groups, on, I feel, are not able to express themselves or utilize their, their full capacity or capability because they are restricted by nations. Uh -huh. nations. Nations would only pull on the resources they feel can best promote them, as you say, the, the Hoover. If they feel yeah. the Hoover is an example for oil. So in, in, in the case of Nigeria, oil is in the South-South. They neglected everything else that everyone else could do. And if I want to speak in favor of, of Igbo, Igbos were very industrious people, right? Uh -huh. They had a lot of, they, they do a lot of construction, but all, all that stuff was ignored. Um, and then they focus on oil. And so now we come to a point where they're thinking, okay, now we need to start looking at the broom. We need to start looking at the 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 the, the, the dustpan. We start looking at everything else but the Hoover. So you cannot just focus on the best and the best and the best. You have to diversify, and that's the point. If then you want to diversify, you look at different groups. Some groups might be eight hundred thousand in population, mm -hmm. and they have no natural resources where they are, but where they're located, there's low education. Okay. If you want to take a factory there to 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 make fabric or, or knitting, that would be the best place to take it. All of them get well, jobs. No, no. So, so who decides? You, 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 you won't take it to a place where lots of people have got high level of education and everyone's got degrees to master's level. You won't who take decides it. that? Who decides that? The people. The Who's people? the people? People decide to put a factory in that location. Well, it, it happens now, doesn't it? It happens no, now. I'm, that's because there's the there's there's, there's groups there's either a, a group or a body that's deciding that which person decides that okay you have a business yeah for instance you have a business okay um you want to make t-shirts you are in a certain region you're going to put it in another region why because it's cheaper the people are less educated is that what, you, what does that mean because it, it, I mean you you put it there because maybe the labor is as good but the, the people there are cheaper to pay for. But that would only be against the fact of the the currency that's in that country. That that that, that that's 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 the way business goes, right? Right yeah, now, I, I know that's the way that's the way business goes. Well, if, you're, if, you're business, if you're a business, okay, and you're gonna put your put your business in another piece of another location outside of your local re region, now you're putting it there because one, the labor is cheap. The only reason the, the labor will be cheap is because compared to your currency, is cheaper. OK, so you're talking about people having to have either either um, a lower cost of living in that area and having the same currency as you or having a set another currency, which your currency is better than so that therefore it makes it easy for you to to have people working there and sending stuff back to where you're from. No, but why would someone do that? It's the same currency. It, it happens everywhere. It's the same currency, but obviously it's a different standard of living. There's, there's no point when you don't have like malls and supermarkets that sell flat screen TVs mm -hmm. up in somewhere like, like, like in somewhere in the north. There's no point. You're not going to spend your money on flat screen TVs. You're going to spend on things you need to eat. Okay. And things you get a house. It happens everywhere, even in this country, in the UK. So when, why when, am I? Why am I going to do that? Why am I going to do that? That group of people a favor. You, you, you said it's you said they're not educated. Why would I? I mean, I get it that if they were educated, but why would I give it to them if they're not educated? Why would you give it to them if they're not educated? Yeah. Why would they I give them work? Because they, they they're not want, educated. Want jobs. People want jobs. They, they, yeah, they want a livelihood. So far, they want jobs, but I got my business. I want my business to work properly. I'm not going to give it to them because they they need to. Why am I like that's like to to. To have a group on its own now, yeah, or to have a group, have groups, yeah, means that you can at least, the whole, uh, the, the Najat Dutta argument is so you can preserve your group and uplift your group, right? Now, we're going to uplift other groups now at the expense of our own group. I'm, I'm not talking about Najat Delta, I'm talking about Bantu Federation. Okay, even, 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 in, even in the Bantu Federation 
style. Listen, let me say this again. Yeah, I'm not against what you're saying. I'm just trying to hash out the idea behind it because these is like if, even just any Pan Africans or non Pan Africanists. Yeah, like. To, to move properly in this African vision now, yeah? Like, we've got to get over some of these large hurdles and be able to agree on it and move forward because if not, we're having this conversation. This conversation is an old conversation, you know? Not in a bad way, but it's an old conversation. It's been had by many intellectual people that know of these things before, you know? Um, Emeka is a perfect example. When I saw him today, I thought, this is another intellectual person who has these ideas and, you know, and everything. But we have to hash out these things to make sure they make sense. And then if we understand them, move forward. So all I'm, all I, all I, all, all you, we're using an example of uh, of businesses right now and everything. I'm just saying that why would I, in my own, and now I have my own group now, why would I take myself to go and help another group? And then, and even if they were another group, Okay, let me answer your question then. Huh? Let me answer your question. Why would you go and help another group? Yeah, yeah. Because you're African. That's the point. Okay. The Federation is about Africa. We're, we're, we're yeah. still talking about groups and groups and tribes. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying, first of all, everyone, for you to be part of a group, there are things that you are good at, things you possess. Your culture is a basis of what you are, your experiences and what you're good at. You know, till to, to, to this day, you can pick people from different groups and there's an expertise that comes from all those groups in every country, in every country. That's the basis. That's the basis. So all I'm saying is even though, say, Igbos, for instance, are, are part of this Panther Federation and they, they, they should have no problem going to a Jukun person or a TIF person's country if the, the TIF people want to welcome them to come and create a, a, an industry there. In, in, in reverse, they might um, the tip people might want to do something else in Ebola. and it's just mutual relationships, mutual okay. relationships. Okay, so okay, so these groups are how okay. This this was the other big one I had before. Okay, how do we identify that this group of people are allowed to call themselves a group? You don't need what? to identify. It's already there. You, you, you can't. Uh, no. Ten thousand of the whole sub-Saharan Africa. They're already there. They exist. They have a culture, a language, a type of food, a way of dance, a way of spiritual belief. Uh, Jesus Christ! Of you, but that's that's what that's, that is. That is crazy. What he just said, man. These are not things to now divide a country on, man. No one's talking. You're, you're, you're asking a question, and you're, you're answering the question somewhere else again. You just mm -hmm. ask how you ask the question directly. How do people define groups? I gave you the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's but but you, you you wouldn't walk you wouldn't walk into a room and be like, okay, you're like this because of what you eat. It, 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 it's 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 just it's what you want to not bring it down to. You know what I'm saying? Because like. Like I'm, I'm just saying, like, would you, like you, you want, you want, you want to make, you want to make this, make sure this whole thing is efficient, isn't it? That's what I'm asking. Just making sure is it, is it, is it, this whole idea, even the Bantu idea of Bantu, is the question I'm always, I'm, uh, the question I'm ideally going to is that is it efficient? Will it, will it make things more efficient? Will, will people move faster? As will Africans move quicker with this idea? Or will only certain groups really benefit from this? Because if some groups here yeah, don't know what they're doing in, in general, I don't know why you think, why why they would now become quicker, they would, they would now move quicker because they're on their own. Because the Western countries, that's exactly how they functioned and they have moved quicker. That's exactly how they well, the, the, only, the only way, the only fact that some countries have moved, like when you say these countries, what do you mean? Like Lithuania? Like what country... Is moving fast like that. These are huge nations. You can't look at European nations are 20 million people. Switzerland is not a huge nation. Switzerland. Switzerland, Switzerland. is one small example of a nation that is among... We're talking I, gave about you one. I gave you one. You asked me, I gave you one. So tell me about Switzerland now. They don't have 400 ethnic groups in one country, right? Okay, on the, yeah. Right? Whoa, they're one people. They're pretty wait. much one people. So explain to me how, how Switzerland, a small country, managed to do it. They'd have no right. resources. Yes. Liechtenstein no, no has 36,000 inhabitants. Liechtenstein has 36,000 inhabitants. And uh -huh. I don't think they're bigger than the people. 
Liechtenstein is a nation between Austria and Switzerland. It's a small nation. They have okay, okay. Thousand inhabitants. That's it. Thirty-six thousand inhabitants. They have the largest uh, per capita GDP um, in Europe. Very rich country, and um, they're they're micro nation and they're a nation. You know, they're a nation. Mm -hmm. So, so all, all, all I'm saying is, everyone wants to give a reason why not to do this when what we've been doing so far hasn't been working. So why not just try something else? And I'm giving examples of countries that have smaller groups with less diversity as nations and are doing just fine. What is the? I, I also asked you. I also, I also asked. I also asked what groups are actually doing something like. Okay, for instance, now yeah. I can just break it down for you. This is this is why I mean I say I haven't got a problem with this stuff. It can happen. I don't mind, but I'm asking about the sense of this whole thing because, like, okay, Ibos want to become their own group, right? Okay, you make your own Ibo land now, yeah. You guys, uh, from my my interpretation of I'm not saying well. you're Ibo. I'm not saying you're Ibo. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just saying I'm using an example uh, Ibo because we can relate to that, right? Okay, if from my understanding of Ibo, of Ibo land and Ibo culture, yeah, Ibos haven't done anything to prepare for any kind of like like you're talking about okay we're talking about maths we're talking about about um um like um c creating like okay um uh writing books in ibo for instance you know what i mean like these things have not been done yet so to talk about what we can there's so much hypothesis in this stuff like let's do let's which groups actually doing these things yeah and especially in some of these regions we're talking about some of these regions we you know if you're talking about somewhere like liberia or you know um, modern day ivory coast or something like that now yeah these groups are not doing these things so you can't then say okay you guys fix up and figure out things properly maybe one group now, now eurobuzz will definitely get on their way they'll be happy Oh, we're, we're having a great time. We know what we're doing. We knew, we we are aware of ourselves. We know what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Other groups George, don't know this stuff. George, George, not 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 every group is going to do everything. The UK has not sent a rocket into space. Right? Okay, they have not sent a rocket into space. They've sent astronauts who jump on bandwagon with Russia and mm -hmm. everyone else in China and the Americas, but they have not sent a rocket into space. So how would you explain that? Because you seem to see, think that, oh, these guys have got everything right. They haven't got everything right. Some things they stole. Who's who? Right. Who's who? They stole. Exactly. So, so no, no, the argument that people need to be able to be writing their books and their language and all that is the only way that they can become a well-notified people doesn't make any sense. No, it's not about, about being a well-notified people. It's about when you then start kind of, kind of, Cordoning off, yeah, things to to to, to your own. Uh, in, in this in this particular case, in particular case, it will be ethnic region. If we do it to a country, I get that. I get that. It's a mix of people, yada yada yada. You know, what I mean, using the using the best people. But to to say that we're doing this based on the group versus who's the best people doesn't make sense to me. If you want to, if you want, if you want to have an argument that let's let's figure out a way to get the best people together in one place. This is an amazing conversation. But to talk about, we need to have a group, a group of people that might not be that smart, might not know what they're doing, but put them together because they need to be together. It's silly. That's why that, to me that seems silly. Like if if I'm trying to go somewhere, I would rather go to people that know what they're doing. I rather I rather if you if I know you're smart and you're I'm from Ghana you're from Nigeria and you're smart let's go together let's do something man not that okay we're both a robot we stay together and figure it out why well what, what, Africans don't need that right now Africans need to be well, the best who, best who, needs who to be together that? so they can actually develop something because we're talking who's about no one's saying that same what what, what you just said. The, the, the. But, but I'm asking, but I said to you before in, in the earlier part of the conversation, yeah, about half an hour ago, yeah, is that if you split everything up now, yeah, they get people who are, who are doing well have to meet somewhere, okay? Okay, and they, and they need to be a, uh, in a place where they're not pushed around because of any kind of ethnic di differences, but the fact that they both are good at what they do. That should be the basis of how you should come together. Not because I'm, you can't move from, okay, I'm, I'm in Yoruba land, I'm just I'm just saying Yoruba and the Ibo just so it makes sense because many of us are Nigerian in this group, right? Okay. Okay, there's Yoruba land, there's Ibo land now, okay. Okay, the person has to go from Ibo land to Yoruba land to start working on a project, but then he's surrounded by Yorubas. That's not fair. 
Do you know what I mean? You want to be somewhere it's almost neutral. So you, you should. So you, you have to create a neutral zone for them to in, to uh, just to move around in. Because the guy's gonna have his own family one day. Not because he's gonna live there and go back home again. He's gonna have a family, and his family's gonna want to be somewhere, and their family's gonna go to a school somewhere. And if you're going to a school, then like, what, is it gonna be a Yoruba school? No. Is it gonna be? A, is it gonna be an Ibo school? No. Like, why would you want to? Uh, if you're an, a, an Ibo person, why would you put want to put your child into an Ibo school into a Yoruba school? Then you have to go and search for a, an Ibo school so your child can grow up in the Ibo what lifestyle while he's in a Yoruba land. What 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 you what you what you fear? Is already happening. That's how it is. The states in Nigeria are separated according to tribe or culture. That's how it is right now. Lagos is a okay. predominantly Yoruba state. If you go to the east in Igbo land, they're predominantly Igbo states with Igbo schools and teachers. That's how it is now. So this fear okay. you have, it is, it's right here, right now. It exists. So there's there's nothing. But to, I'm, this I'm is not talking about Nigeria now. though. This this conversation is not about Nigeria. It's the thing. This conversation is about the group, the group of African nations. And I'm trying to say that these differences, these differences are actually, I can understand them being in Nigeria, but across the growth, across the, across the African continent, they're not as much of a big deal. This, this, this need to have the differences there. You know, like the nations that want to, that nations that, or people that want to fight for these things and fight for the division are, are almost slowing themselves down by the fact that, they're not focusing on what needs to be focused on. To focus on the splitting up of nations as a way to improve the bunch of people that are there for Africans, not Nigerians. It doesn't make sense. If you want to split up Nigeria and do whatever you want to do, fine. You Nigerians will hit their own hurdles again or whatever group that splits up. It, um, it, um, Delta State will hit their own problems again. Because 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 the, the next stage that Blacks need to, re to reach is not being, has not been reached yet. And it's not fully functioning in itself. And that should be the goal. How can we move towards a fully functioning black state where the where blacks all over the world are waiting for one group to show us how it's done, man? Do you know what I mean? That's the truth. Black groups, all black nations all over the world are waiting for one nation to show them this is how it's done. They will follow suit. Okay, that, that, that nation is going to come from the, the smartest people or the best bunch of people they can get in that, in that vicinity to create something that people can then mirror. You're actually seeing that Nigerians are like the top purveyors of what it would be to be an African nation, even though internally you might see all forms of problems. Yeah, but from the outside, Nigerians are great people. Nigerians are great. They have one of the best models of Africanness that you would ever see out of Africa in the next in the next century. Great how and they're only gonna get higher. What, what do you mean how is Nigeria great? See, because you're in Nigeria, you don't see it from the outside yeah. Many African nations haven't got nowhere near the level That's of stature that Nigeria has. When you when you see when you see successful Africans outside of Africa, they're more likely than any other group to be Nigerian. See, you're laughing because you don't know them, do you? Oh my god, this is great! Oh, it's crazy, it's crazy, but it's also true. It's also oh. true. I, I have all African nations, Nigerians are the most entrepreneurial, the most successful Africans we have in the, in Africa. And we're the largest Ni in Ni Nigeria. Nigeria represents. I've always said this. I've always said this. Yeah. Nigeria, regardless of how malfunctioned, how malnourished, how deformed, how chaotic, how corrupt, how defective, whatever kind of negative vocabulary you can come up with, Nigeria represents, if there's any country in the world, both in Africa and in the, and in the diaspora, Including the Caribbean, yeah. If there's any country that has the potential to become that beacon that all black people around the world will look up to, that country is Nigeria. God forbid, it's a very bad example. Okay, Nigeria is a bad example because Nigeria, Nigeria, talk. if only if only <laughs> you know the role, Nigeria, if. Imagine, you, you know, if I was telling I was telling Ego the other time, I, I was telling him, I said, it's easy for people to be in the country and not understand how that country itself 
is keeping other countries from disintegrating. Countries around Nigeria depend heavily on Nigeria. When Nigeria went, I'll give you a typical example. When Nigeria went to a recession two years ago, the level of poverty in Chad and Niger skyrocketed. Those countries depend heavily on food that is being smuggled from Nigeria into their region. You can imagine when chaos literally breaks out in Nigeria. Nigeria disintegrates. If it disintegrates peacefully, that's fine. But if it disintegrates into chaos and anarchy, I'm afraid that not, not, not only the entire West Africa will disintegrate, but Central Africa as well will, will follow suit. That is how key Nigeria, Nigeria is. is. So I think... Ethnic just Obama. like just like we had the um i'm going to use your example maker just like we had the austrian hungarian empire in the past okay we should not make the kind of mistakes that the, Aust the archduke ferdinand made there is need for the for the leaders in nigeria to put in place measures that will allow ethnic um, ethnic groups or regions within the states to have autonomy that i believe I will that. Be, the gals, everybody the gals I'm, autonomy. I'm back now can i um can i ask one question okay how would the uh bantu federation co cooperate with the west because obviously the west is has its puppet strings uh and is heavily involved in the african union so what role uh, will the 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 West play in the Bantu Federation? But go ahead and finish your um, statement to the the. the I'm going to I just got back. Good morning, so I'm going. Thanks, guys. Okay, all right, Emeka. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, 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 I'll let I'll let Naomi continue. I'll, I'll just say that real quick because because this is obviously a vision that I, I've had in my head. I, I I'd like to follow the China model and literally shut off from the rest of the world for a period of time. Mm -hmm. for a period of time and, and develop to a point where we're self-sustainable, self-sufficient, and then reconnect with the West on our own terms. That's what I would do. Okay, well, let me just let me just come in briefly. I don't think we should follow the Chinese model and shut off, okay? What Africa is doing now, I don't know if you've been following the events in the last couple of years or in the last few years. What we're trying to do now is to now, fast track regional and continental integration. Most importantly, fast track how we begin to trade with ourselves. So I will not advocate that we cut off from the rest of the world and follow the Chinese model. Again, I, 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 I think we've discussed this in the past. China cut off from the world, not because they wanted to cut off from the world, but because the West placed sanctions on them. They did not choose to cut off from the world. I, did, I didn't know now, that. I didn't yes. Know. They didn't cut off from the they didn't cut off from the world deliberately. So a lot of people have this misconception that China just cut off from the world. No, Mao Zedong seized power in China, drove the West out of China. Yeah. So if you watch footages or if you read books of 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 of, of how China was pre Mao, you will see that the West had significant presence in China. Right. But when Mao Zedong and the and its communist uh, rebels the overthrew, revolution. yes, overthrew. The, um, the the Western puppets that they had in China, yeah, they chased the West, the Western puppets there to a tiny island off the coast of China that we today know as Taiwan. Okay, so they fled to that that that, that, that island and they sought refuge there. The West then recognized that 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 tiny island, Taiwan, as the Republic of China. Okay, that they recognized them as China, so they didn't even recognize mainland china as china they recognize the leaders in taiwan as china and they continue trade with them okay so mao most sanctions was placed on china for 20 years until nixon went to beijing in 1971 to meet mao that was when the west then resumed trade and business and diplomatic discussions with china so china did not cut off on the west okay they did not sanctions were placed on the west i will not advocate the same model i will say let's consolidate on how we are going to um uh, move towards regional integration and how we can trade with ourselves a a, conf a a continental free trade area was created last um a few last week i believe okay this is is geared towards boosting trade okay 
Africa, the way it's structured, is structured in such a way that resources are supposed to be extracted from it. So it's not structured to grow. What we are trying to do now is to position the continent so that the continent can grow for itself and its people. Thank you. What about, what about from a uh, military, uh, I would say, uh, from a, a, a military point of view? Uh, now, again, just out of uh, clarification, Northern Africa, including Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia, are they part of the Bantu Federation? Yes or no? So Morocco, Algiers, Algeria, uh, even Mauritania, because uh, I know they're heavily Arab um, influenced. Well, that, but that's not really considered Northern uh, Africa. But the Northern Africa, T Tunisia, uh, those Northern African countries, are they included in the Bantu Federation? No. Okay. So if we have a situation like in Libya, like we had a couple years ago, Gaddafi, and the West decides it's time for a Gaddafi type leader or a leader in North Africa to go, do we get involved or do we let the West do what they do? The problem with the African. The problem with the African Union and Africa having a formidable force is down to funding. Funding remains one of the problems the African Union has. Okay, a lot of the countries in Af in 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 the Af in Africa in the African Union do not pay their dues. So the African Union, as we know today, is largely being funded by a few, a handful of countries, and it depends heavily on external funding. So, for example. The African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa, we have today, is was built by the Chinese. Right. And uh, not too long ago, we read in the papers that bugs were found in on the computers in Addis Ababa. So essentially, the Chinese were using their the, the computers that they donated to the to the to the administrators uh, in Addis Ababa to spy on Africa. And, and I want to say China's building what an ECOWAS headquarters too, or they're building something else. Yeah, they did say they were going to help to build ECOWAS, but I don't know, I don't know if that's been um, action. Yeah, but I, you're right. I did read in the papers that they they suggested we have the current ECOWAS secretariat in Abuja, though. It's, it's it's big, so I don't know if the, the Chinese are going to build another one. But yeah, but they were Chinese are essentially spying on African leaders on the secretariat that they that they help. Um, 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 the Africans built again. This is largely due to funding. When you have an organization that's supposed to be getting funding, robust funding from 54 to 55 of its members, the funding is not flowing. It creates whole, it creates a vacuum for for foreign powers and foreign organizations to begin to maneuver its um, uh, its objectives and uh, its, uh, its overall direction. So that's what we see in the African Union today. That's what we see the African Union is not a largely effective organization. That's what we see, most importantly, when Gaddafi, uh, when, uh, when, when it was time for Gaddafi, uh, when, 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 the, when the fall, when Gaddafi fell, instead of the African Union to step in and prevent NATO and the West from coming in, they, they, were, they largely couldn't do anything. They created a vacuum or to co or com com combine with the fact that a continent has a, a plethora of a, a, um, inept leaders, we, 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 we couldn't do anything, and then the NATO went in there and just took out Gaddafi. But the solution to that problem, I think, is um, working on how we can continue to fund the African Union um, to be able to, to, to take more, play a more leading role in the challenges that the continents face. There are crises in, in Somalia. There are pockets of crisis in Congo. There are Islamic insurgencies in Mali and parts of Senegal. There's the Boko Haram insurgency in Nigeria and or, or in parts of um, Chad and, and Niger. The African Union should be able to play a key role in resolving all those crises rather than creating um, a, a, a lacuna for foreign powers to exploit. As I speak to you now, we have... Chinese military troops active in Djibouti. Mm -hmm. We have Turkish military troops active in Djibouti. We have UAE foreign troops active in North Africa. We have China, even Japanese military troops active in Africa. We have French military troops active in West Africa. We have US drone base in Niger and in, um, and in, um, and in Somalia. So all this- Even uh, India has a base, India. 
is when India is negotiating to have yeah, a military oh, base in, 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 in Seychelles. So, again, if the African Union is giving the kind of funding and everybody is playing the role that they need to play, then we won't have um, the opportunity of creating an avenue where all these foreign powers, again, I think it's largely due to that absence of pan-Africanism because everyone is largely focused on their nation states. You take care of your own business and I take care of my own business. That's, I think, is the mentality that is prevalent across um, different African countries when it comes to discussing continental issues. They largely leave those issues to the big boys, i.e. South Africa, Egypt, and Nigeria to resolve. I, I would just say last is... Um... I think I think Pan Africanism is dead. Um, sad, sad to say, and it, it needs a revival. I think it's dead. Mm -hmm. They're just disparate, smaller parts and groups and portions of people who are championing it. But on the continent where it needs to be the loudest voice, it is dead. Um, and we need to start acknowledging it that way because it should be at the heart of what the African Union is doing, and it's not. It's not at all. It's it's completely dead. That's why we need to that's why we need to continue to create this necessary awareness for Africans in Africa and for Africans in the diaspora. African Americans are watching this. We have we have um, um, Afro Latinos, we have Africans, African of African descent in South America, in Brazil, who are looking for a day and time when the continent will begin to put its acts together. Everyone is looking on us to, to, to get our acts together. And maybe that time will come when those in the diaspora can now begin to look at a time when they, they will begin to return. I saw a video of yourself that you took when you went to the African Renaissance Monument in Dakar. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that was really, really moving. I've, I've always seen that monument, I, especially on us, on Dark. We have, if you look at our cover um, page for Dark, it has that logo. But you went inside that um, monument and, mm -hmm. and uh, watching that your video gave me an insight on how that, that, that video is. And it shows you what visionary leadership can do. You see, the president of, of, of Senegal was mm -hmm. able to put that, that, that statue in, 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 in Dakar. And um, from what I gather from that video, that, that, that uh, statue has a shelf life of 1,200 years. So essentially, that statue could be standing till the year 3,200 as a symbol of African Renaissance. You know, son, these are the, like, the, the flashes of the kind of leadership that we desperately need in the continent that sadly we do not have. Mm, absolutely. Make sure everybody, I just put it in the chat room as well. Everyone who's watching this stream or who watches the stream, please subscribe to Diaspora African Renaissance channel. Please uh, go there and subscribe to the page. Uh, love what the brothers are doing. So make sure you guys do that. Um, you know, when, when um, at, at the end of the stream or do it now. So, so yeah, make sure you guys do that. So, so what's the end game for uh, Bantu Federation? And say Bantu Federation gains steam, which it will. Uh, do you think the African Union will consider it a threat? I Meaning, can the African Union and the Bantu Federation work uh, side by side? Um, I would say um, no, it can't work side by side. The only way you can work side by side is if it becomes a civic organization, so made by civilians outside um, and have like a, and grow to have tentacles in various African countries and be a kind of allied organization, but, but side by side, no. Remember, African Union was once OAU, Organization of African Unity, which morphed into African Union. And this is why I feel it's going to morph into the Bantu Federation. It might be under another name. It might be the African Federation at that point, AF. It might be the United States of Africa. Who knows? But um, at, at the heart of it is what I'm seeing here, that it will be for Bantu peoples because the North African countries have an allegiance not to Africa, but to Arabia and Arab countries. All right, cool, man. I mean, everyone, thank you uh, so much for joining us. Let's see if we have any uh, questions in the uh, chat room. Did anybody want to follow up with that uh, to that question at all? What's the question? Uh, will, will, will the African Union feel threatened by an organization like the Bantu Federation? Mm. I, I always thought it was uh, it was a, it was about 
the same name really. I thought it was the same, the same, the same body, but with a new name and a new focus really. Um, I guess by calling it Bantu, it, it kind of just says Sub-Saharan Africa, which excludes the Arabs. I guess by saying Africa, it, it covers all of Africa, so it includes Arabs. So um, it's kind of it's it's, it's 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 meant to be there to focus on just on just the Africans that are actually African and stuff, really, which I think is important. And, um, and for that, I, I mean, I, I definitely agree with the idea that uh, of of a of a, of a African or Bantu, a uh, sub-Saharan African focus group, mm. being uh, being ahead of being being ahead. I also I also don't mind the idea of 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 mult multiple of I guess the dispensing of the, the dispensing of borders. Um, the route I would take would not be to to go down to ethnic group, but more to homogenize the groups into larger larger nations and rebrand them however they want to rebrand it. So they can have a, a wider pool of people to choose from. You can choose how you want with that, really. Um, but as I say, I'm down with the idea of of Bantu of a, of a Bantu federation. How you get there is my route would be to um, to, to homogenize some of the countries that are there. So some of the smaller nations some work or become part of the bigger nations. Maybe if there's an issue with the namings and stuff like that, maybe change the name and move forward with that really rather than because i mean I, f I find that you know if you look if you look at map of, map, map of africa you see there's many small small nations which are just they're just there because of uh political reasons you know but as far as moving forward and doing anything for themselves it's it's as slow as it's as slow as everyone else is regardless of the size they have you know and so what's most important to me is that um, you just find you 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 you, you find the best way to find the best talent in your in your nation, which is why countries like America are shining beacons again, even if they're messed up and everyone says, well, kind of trash about them and Trump this, Trump that. You go to America, America's a great nation. You know this, I know this, you know, and part and parcel of that is the fact that it allows a lot of talent to rise up to the front, you know? Um, and if we want to be a, a, a balanced African nation, we have to find ways to bring the talent to the forefront. Cool. Yeah. Someone, so, someone in the chat room is asking, "What kind of political system would they implement uh, for the Bantu Federation?" Parliamentary system. Okay. So that's similar to what's uh, in Britain right now. Yes, because in Britain, as you see, up and down the country, about sixty plus million people. Um, they've got about six hundred MPs, so it's almost like one person to a hundred thousand. Um, and representing all parts of the country and they all sit down at one table and it's just them to the prime minister they put their questions directly to the prime minister it's two steps from the common man straight to the top that's all it should be not from local government to state government from state government to uh, senator from senator to the top no it should be straight direct rule you straight to your local representative that one straight to the top and that's it all right perfect i mean is there is there anything else and again everybody thank you so much for uh coming on and joining us um what we'll do we'll go ahead and close out unless there's something else you guys want to want to speak on but if not i mean everybody on the panel please uh um, you know give your contact information and also just uh just close out and you know go ahead and we'll go ahead and sum everything up and and end everything all right then it was a pleasure uh no problem thank you everybody it was an absolute pleasure. Um, you can follow us on um, at Dar Channel. That's at D A R Channel, or one word. That's on Twitter, and on um, on Instagram, it's D underscore A underscore R underscore Channel, and uh, I think Facebook, it's uh, Dar Channel again. But uh, thanks a lot. I really really enjoyed it. Thanks for having us on the show. Then everybody, please make sure you go and subscribe as well. Yeah, please do. Thanks, guys. No problem. Everybody, again, thank you for uh, for joining us. Uh, make sure you go to Search for Uhuru at um, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, also, uh, somebody has a great question. Um, how would you guys deal with the uh, white South African situation that's going on right now? 
I think they both they all went off. Man. Yeah, they all went off. Sorry about that, Sultan. Man, Sultan asking all these questions late. <laughs> um, but yeah, but everybody, thank you so much for coming on. Search for Hubu at Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, make sure you go to dynasamir.com, go to search for and then go to Amazon, Amazon.com and search your name Dynasty Mirror. Please buy a book. Um, thank you so much for coming on. Till next time. Peace.